So this could probably be one of the worst timings to be talking about this, especially when there's like millions unemployed. I know it just feels like I'm flexing. This still should be something that should be said, but before I begin, I still always have to talk about some like brief background as to why I'm talking about the subject in the first place. So way back in 2018, well it's only like two years ago, I got laid off from my first job, from a research associate position. But on that day before I got laid off, just like three months ago, before that actual layoff day, I got a raise. I got like a 10% raise, going from like originally my offer letter 63,000 to 10% raise 69,300. I thought that job was like so stable. Like they just gave me a raise. I just I was on that job only for like six months, and then I got a 10% raise. So I mean, with that mindset, I thought that job was stable. I thought like you know my life was set. But then just three months later, after that raise, I was just working on the project. Everyone on that project, they got laid off. I felt bad because I thought it was my fault. I thought I wasn't working hard enough. I thought maybe like my degree or just me personally was not working hard enough or just I wasn't related to that project. So I felt bad. I felt like it was my fault that everyone got laid off. But that wasn't the case and I don't suggest you have that mindset. That layoff was way beyond my control and way beyond anyone's control. So eventually, yeah, everyone got laid off. And so I was like desperately searching for like six months. You know, I was surviving off of my unemployment benefits from taxpayers. Thank you everyone for paying your taxes and letting me survive. Basically on my last week before my unemployment benefits expired, like you know after the whole span of six months, I finally got one offer letter from my current position right now. And so when you're basically like at the brink of desperation and you know just surviving off of unemployment and someone gives you an offer letter making $75,000 a year, which is more than what I previously made, of course you'd be thinking, why wouldn't you take it? I mean, you're so willing to take anything at that point because you're so desperate. So on that day that they offered me 75,000, I was so ecstatic, I was so happy. I called my parents, told everyone, told all my friends, and I didn't even think much about it. I just sort of, in a way, like wanted to accept it. I just pretty much blankly said to the you know, hiring manager, yes, I'll take it. I didn't even give a, a second thought about negotiating or anything. Like, I was just thinking, should I even try to negotiate? I'm just so blessed already to take anything. So you know, desperate to take anything. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be grateful, but just thinking back at the past, I was too rash and too I guess, emotional in my decision. Just deciding on the spot immediately, that wasn't a good idea. I should have at least tried to negotiate, and I'm gonna give you a few reasons why. So again, I know you're desperate here looking for a job, and I know it made more than what my previous job had. You don't want to sell yourself short. You don't want to be like a subordinate. You still are valuable. You're still human. You still have morals and standards, and you should still have like a set bar for yourself. So you have to realize that there are people out there who are less qualified for this position, but they're still able to get that position. So like, why is that? And how is that even possible? Like, you think they're just so dumb. They don't fit the position at all, but they're still able to get that, and they're probably getting paid more than the qualified person more than your friend who's qualified, or maybe even more than you, but you, you know that you won't be making dumb decisions like them. Just don't sell yourself short. You know, realize that you have a set standard too. Make sure that you're keeping yourself to that standard, because if everyone just like accepts everything, then you know, you're gonna be a slave to work forever. So I know even though times are tough, still have that, you know, integrity with yourself. Next is that it doesn't hurt to ask. I mean, the worst you can get is rejected. They're not gonna like take away your offer letter. They shouldn't like rescind that and like you know, give it to someone else. I think that might be illegal. Or if anything, that's just downright messed up as a person. So get this. You're basically walking up to your hiring manager after like a professional and you know really persuasive story. You just ask them for a raise. Let's say they agree to that. Let's say they give you like a three thousand dollar raise. Basically, you just took like thirty minutes, maybe one hour of your time, and got like a three thousand dollar bonus. So that's basically like $3,000 worth of storytelling right there in one hour. Can you imagine that? You just made $3,000 in like one hour. But the only caveat to that is that you have to be really persuasive, really motivating, and you actually have to have like good points, good reasons as to why you deserve it. I mean, not everyone's gonna get this immediately. They might just flat out reject you. But again, it doesn't hurt to ask because who knows, you might just end up $3,000 richer because you're able to tell a really good story. And you build all this like negotiation skills and storytelling as you progress throughout the years and you know you'll build up reasons as to why you deserve it so just have that in mind and lastly it's important to ask because 
if you were to ever get a raise or a bonus in the future, it is based off of the current amount that you're making. So for example, if you are making like $75,000 a year and they give you like a 3% increase per year, that equivalents to uh, like a $2,250 increase every single year or you know just that amount, that amount. But let's say for example, your initial offer letter was $100,000 a year. That 3% is now $3,000 compared to the $2,200. So just basic math here, the more you earned before, the more you will receive later on. So that's my take off of like why you should at least try to negotiate what you're given, what your initial offer letter is. Typically they know that that employee, they're gonna wanna negotiate. So they have like a little wiggle room. They have like a little extra amount just because they know that this guy's probably gonna ask for another like $1,000. So, and if he has good reasons to, I might just give it to him have that little cushion just because I know or I expect them to negotiate. So if you're going to take it right away, they just kept or they just pocketed like another, let's say $5,000 wiggle room that you could have received yourself. So yeah, just have the courage to do it. Have integrity for yourself. Don't just accept everything like me. It's not just the company that's offering you something like a study paycheck. It's you yourself offering the company some value. So if you have like valuable skills that you can give to the company, they're willing to pay you know, much more for that. They don't want to just hire anyone off the street. So if everyone is skilled, then, you know, everyone's competing. Everyone is valuable. Make sure that you understand that. Don't have that fear like me because in the future, you're going to regret it.